I want to just quickly summarize some of the music and print article or chapter in order to give you a chance to associate some of the terms um, and ideas he brings up with some color images. Until around the beginning of the 16th century, music was handwritten, that is, it appears in manuscripts, manus meaning hand and script meaning written. Um, and you're not likely to encounter a medieval manuscript to music unless you're in a special collections position. And even then, it's fairly unusual in US libraries, um, with the exception of some later chant manuscripts that, have, that become more, uh, more common. But it's not until around the end of the 15th, beginning of the 16th century, that music printing um, begins to be used widely. Early music printing, like early text printing, was generally done with movable type. Some printers used triple, triple impression printing where the lines were printed, then the paper was run through the press again for the music notation, and then a third time for the text. Um, other printers used more efficient but less lovely single impression method where the paper only needed to be run through once because the pieces of type included the lines as well as the note heads and symbols. Um, and you can often tell when you're looking at images of triple impression versus single impression printing that the lines will look smoother in triple impression and will look sort of broken um, between the notes in single impression printing. Among the later generations of printing, the most long lived was printing with engraved metal sheets. Unlike movable type, these weren't disassembled after printing, and in fact, many survive now with the original music on them. Um, and they could be reused again for printings if they were needed. This gave the printer a lot of control over exactly how the score worked and made reprinting easy, but it was difficult to do the engraving and expensive. So movable type coexisted with engraving for a long time and continued to be used for text heavy things like hymn books. Beginning in the 19th century, music publishers began to use lithography, which is a form of engraving um, originally on stone and then later in types of uh, metal sheets. And lithography made printing much, much cheaper um, and resulted in the widespread market for sheet music in the 19th and early 20th centuries. All of this printing history may not be too important in the average music librarian job, but if you're interested in special collections and archives, then learning to determine the printing technique used and understanding the limitations of these techniques is really important. Uh, most of the images on my slides are from musicprintinghistory.org, which has a lot more detail and other images and also goes into some of the shorter lived printing innovations like the music typewriter. So I really recommend that as a next step if this is a topic you're interested in.